Can you check your audio for me? Here I am. Awesome. All right, please keep yourselves muted. I am going to start the webinar and let everyone in. Recording in progress. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we've just opened up the Zoom webinar, so we're going to give folks a few more minutes just to log in. So if you could sit tight with us, we appreciate it. Um, I do know we have a number of folks who are watching our uh, Cal EPA live webcast. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. So please uh, stay tuned. We should be starting in just a minute or two. We're giving folks an opportunity to dial in. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, we are uh, hosting this webinar on our Zoom platform. Uh, but like I said earlier, we do have a number of folks who are participating uh, watching our live Cal EPA webcast. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our website uh, a few days from now. And we will send out an email to all registrants so that you know that it's been posted. We've also shared the PowerPoint slides that we're gonna cover today with everyone who was registered up to about 30 minutes ago. Um, but if you've just registered, uh, we will send out the PowerPoint slides again uh, after this webinar, just to make sure that you get a copy of those slides. Uh, they will be posted on our website as well and we will be sharing more as we go through this uh, presentation. Alrighty, I'm going to go to the next slide. So the way that this presentation is going to be set up, um, my name is Kristen Appold, and I'm going to walk you through our PowerPoint present presentation today. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we are going to have um, hopefully a very long Q&A session where participants are encouraged throughout the webinar to use the uh, question and answer box uh, if you're participating through Zoom to please uh, answer your or enter your questions there. And folks who are monitoring that can upvote a question if you really like it. Um, it's one of your questions too. Please push the little thumbs up button and that will uh, mean that it's desirable to be answered and we'll answer it at the end of this webinar. If there are questions that are uh, not uh, answered in this webinar, we will be uh, compiling them and writing out the answers and hopefully posting them on our website as soon as possible. For those of you who are participating via the Cal EPA webcast and you have questions for us, please email us at ddw-safer-nau at waterboards.ca.gov. We do have staff who are uh, monitoring that inbox and they will share those questions with us so that we can answer them uh, during this webinar. Um, we are hopeful potentially at the end of the webinar, if you have a question, you can definitely raise your hand and we'll try to unmute you so that you can ask your question verbally if you don't want to uh, type in your question. But we are gonna ask that you hold your hand raising until the end of the webinar when we get to the Q&A session. We're gonna to try to power through the slides and hopefully a lot of the material that we covered today will answer some of the questions that you have coming into the webinar. Um, I see already some questions coming in. 
Uh, there is a, a question about receiving the PowerPoint slides. Yes, we're going to send them out again to everybody after the webinar. Um, maybe you didn't receive them because they were too large. Uh, just email us at this email address and we'll definitely make sure you get a copy of those if you still don't see them by the end of today. Um, we're getting some mixed reviews about audio quality and I apologize for that. If you're participating via Zoom and you're still getting bad audio quality, I recommend that you uh, go to our Cal EPA uh, live webcast. It's on the State Water Board's website under webcasts and uh, that might have better audio for you. Okay. Um, before we get started, I would love for you, if you can, if you're participating via Zoom, to fill out two poll questions for us. So I've just launched the first one, uh, which is please identify who you are. You're a water system, state government, an NGO, you're an interested public member or other. I'm gonna give you a few seconds and this will just give us a sense of who's participating with us today. We can try to tailor some of our, um, our messaging Give you a few more minutes or seconds. All right, I'm going to shut this down. I think we've got pretty good participation here. And looks like the vast majority of you, 81% who responded uh, are a water system representative, which is fantastic. This webinar really is uh, designed to uh, help facilitate your participation in this program. So I'm so happy that you guys can join us. We've got some state government employees, which is great. Uh, some NGO and association folks. Uh, we have one person from the public, which thank you for joining us. Hopefully you find this uh, informational. And then we've got about 8% of 33 who said that they are uh, not any of the, uh, the folks listed above. So again, thanks for joining us. I have one more poll question that I would like you to participate in. It's, will you please select the topics you are most interested in learning about today? And you can select more than one option. So just select all the ones that resonate with you. And again, this will help us tailor our presentation today. Okay, just a few more seconds and I'll shut this down. All right, I'm going to end the poll, share the results. Okay, looks like the majority of you are interested in just general information about this uh, overage program. Uh, the second, uh, piece here is more details about program eligibilities, and hopefully we'll be able to cover a lot of that today. I anticipate a lot of your questions will come in at the end around this as well. Um, we've got program timeline, which we will definitely cover, and how to access and navigate the program survey. We definitely have some slides on that, and we have some information on where you can reach out to if you're having difficulty in navigating the survey. Um, as some folks who are interested on how to get help, and uh, a number of folks who have some specific questions. So hopefully we can get to those uh, at the end. Again, I'm gonna try to go through these slides, um, hopefully quickly so that we have lots of time for Q&A. Okay, so let's get started. This is what we're gonna cover today. In this webinar, we're going to discuss program eligibility, the program timeline, and the survey that was launched last Wednesday. First and foremost, we wanna just start with big picture eligibility for this program. Uh, this program right now is designed to assist uh, water systems and maybe in the future, wastewater systems, if we have enough pro uh, funding. 
So a lot of what you're gonna hear today is really from the drinking water perspective, um, but just remember that available funds later could be used to support a wastewater program. So when we're talking about eligibility, we're thinking about drinking water for now. So community water systems are the eligible entities who can apply for funding for this program and who are being asked to respond to the program survey we released last Wednesday. For community water systems, in order to be eligible, you need to have accrued residential or commercial drinking water arrearages during the COVID pandemic period, which is defined by legislation to be from March 4th, 2020 through June 15th, 2021. Um, debt relief for residential and commercial wastewater services, like I said, may be available later. The program will reassess funding availability in January, 2022 to determine if enough funds are available for a wastewater arrearage program. Arrearages is a bit of a, a weird word. I think a lot of folks um, don't quite use it often in their uh, vernacular. So we're gonna just quickly define what do we mean by arrearages? Um, it is the sum or dollar amount of the utility bill that includes drinking water services that has not been paid in full after 60 days or more from the past due date of that bill. So a late bill, for example, one where maybe the deadline for payment uh, the due date was, you know, a week ago or two weeks ago. Uh, that bill typically is not in arrears yet. It is usually an extended period of time after the due date. Uh, and what we've used in our definition uh, is 60 days or more. So we've given a bit of an example here on the slide to hopefully provide more clarity on what we mean by arrearages. So that's very high level um, definitions and a little bit about eligibilities. Um, I wanted to provide just a little bit of a breakdown on the timeline of the program. It's fairly uh, complicated. There's a lot of different players involved. There are you, the water systems, and then there's the state water board. Uh, this timeline hopefully provides enough uh, context so you understand what we have planned over a very short period of time. Uh, legislation has some deadlines in it for the water board to get this money distributed as fast as possible. We are trying to get money to water systems to cover um, a residential and commercial arrearages uh, before the shutoff moratorium or hopefully around shutoff moratorium. So we're really providing as much assistance as possible to those who need it. The program survey was launched last Wednesday and it will be open until September 10th. And this is for community water systems to complete. This information is going to be used to uh, determine our allocation formula for nearly a billion dollars in available funding. Uh, based on the need that we determine from the survey results, we will calculate the maximum amount each water system will be able to request when the application window opens. We are trying to host a series of webinars to provide lots of opportunities for water systems and others to ask questions about the survey in particular. Today is our first webinar, but we do have two more that are gonna be hosted by RCAC on August 26th. So if you're interested in registering for those, please visit the RCAC website. Um, they have a registration page where you can sign up for those webinars. Again, just to respond to questions that have come in, today's webinar will be recorded and posted on our website and the PowerPoint slides are gonna be made available to you. Um, if you have not already received them, we sent them out 30 minutes ago to folks who uh, were registered. The board is going to adopt a resolution es establishing the program guidelines. Uh, there should be a draft published hopefully sometime next week, which will provide a little bit more clarity about uh, the program itself. Uh, the, there is a requirement that uh, after the board officially um, passes a resolution adopting the guidelines that the uh, water board will have to open up the application window within 14 days. So you'll see things move quite quickly. Uh, after the survey concludes, the board will adopt um, the guidelines through a board resolution. And then soon after the application window will open where you will be 
uh, told what your maximum allocation may be, you, went, you can request either the maximum amount or a smaller amount when you come in for the funding. Uh, the water board's uh, application approval is uh, at this time to be determined and will be laid out more fully in the program guidelines. Uh, and the legislation requires that the state water board begin dispersing funds no later than November 1st, 2021. So that is hopefully when we will start uh, dispersing funds to approved applications later in the fall. When a water system receives funding from this program, uh, there is a window uh, 60 days after receiving the funds. It needs to be allocated uh, as a credit to customers' accounts for those that are still with arrears. Um, there needs to be a notification of a payment plan, which is optional for those customers that have uh, received assistance but still have arrears. Uh, they have 30 days uh, to sign up for that payment plan. And if they choose not to sign up for the payment plan and the moratorium uh, for shutoffs has expired, then shutoffs would be allowed. But I encourage you to, to pay close attention to the, the deadlines, um, 30 days of the payment plan or with the September 30th date. You cannot do shutoffs before either of those. Um, there will be required reporting to the state on how the funding was allocated. Uh, this uh, will be outlined more fully in the program guidelines that will be coming out later. So stay tuned, but just be aware that there will be some form of reporting requirement for those water systems that uh, accept funds from this program. Uh, and then obviously we have to determine in January, 2022, whether or not there's available funding to support a wastewater arrearages program. So I know that was a lot of information to cover, but hopefully that provides a lot more context about the timeline of the, um, of the entire program. So we did launch the survey, which we are required to do. Uh, it is in the legislation to determine statewide residential and commercial arrearages. Uh, for drinking water and water enterprise revenue shortfalls that have accrued during that COVID pandemic period, which again is March 4th, 2020 through June 15th, 2021. The survey uh, is only open for 30 days. And you'll hear me repeat that throughout this webinar. Um, the deadline is September 10th, 2021. And this is a hard deadline. There will um, not be any extensions. So please, please, please participate before uh, the end of September 10th. Again, the State Water Board is gonna be required to adopt a resolution establishing the program guidelines for application requirements and reimbursement amounts for arrearages. And this will um, happen after the survey, although the Water Board does plan on releasing a draft uh, for public comment, uh, hopefully sometime next week. So how do you access the program survey? So the survey uh, is open and available for community water systems to participate. You access it through the electronic annual portal, um, report portal, which is you can access it through our water board website, or if you just Google the electronic annual report portal, you'll find the page that looks like this um, and you can access it uh, see the red square over here, EAR portal for reporters. We did email all of our administrative contacts for our community water systems that we have in our database. We've also uh, shared the email notifying community water systems that this survey is live through to their uh, uh, contract operators, their um, other operators and other contacts that we have available. We are trying to really get the word out. Um, however, we do recognize that some of our uh, emails in our database may not be the most up-to-date. So if you have not received an email notification about this survey yet, uh, please uh, check out this website. You can still get to the survey. Um, you do not need to have received an email from us in order to access the survey. Okay, so once you 
uh, get to the EAR portal from our website or from the link in our, our email that we, we sent out last week and again this week. Uh, if you are an existing EAR user, you can log in like you normally do. And again, if you are um, already credentialed to report for a water system for a particular PWS ID, you should then see a new link that says my arrearages reports. If you are not already registered as a user for the EAR portal, you can click on the link on the left that says never been here before, and you will be prompted to provide some information. And you will have to wait a little bit because as a new user, you have to be approved by water board staff. So there might be a little bit of a lag time by the time you fill out the, the new registration page to when then you, you can get access to the portal. So bear with us. We do have a lot of staff who are trying to respond to those requests as soon as they come in. But if it's been more than a few days and you haven't received a confirmation yet, please reach out to us. Um, you'll see the, web, the email address throughout this presentation. We encourage you to reach out to that email address. Once you do get in uh, to the EAR portal, um, you should, if you're already a registered EAR user, you should see a link where you can manage my water system list if you're missing a water system that you wanna complete the survey for. If you click on that link, manage my water system list, uh, there are two ways that you can add a water system. So this is definitely important for new users. If you've never used this portal before, you'll go to the same page here and you can, um, you can add your water system a number of ways. You can search for the PWS ID for the water system, or you can start typing in the water system's name, or there's a drop down list where you can kind of filter by your district. Uh, but once you find your water system, in the list on the left-hand side, click on it so that it's highlighted, and then click the add button. You can see step number three here, which should move that water systems uh, PWS ID number and name into the window on the right underneath your water systems, and then save your changes. Now, once you do that, that sends an email to the water board and we have to approve that request. So it won't be automatic when you go back to your dashboard in the EAR, you're not gonna see that water system listed yet until the state water board staff approves you as a reporter for that water system. So again, there might be a little bit of a lag time for especially new users. So I encourage you, if you have not registered uh, to be a user in the EAR and you intend to participate in the survey to get in now, to request your account so that you can be all set up for when you're ready to uh, fill out the survey. If you experience any trouble doing this, uh, setting up an account, getting uh, access to report for a particular PWS ID, a water system, um, please reach out to our Community Water Systems COVID Relief email address. It's here on the screen. We also have a phone number that you can call, which will leave a voicemail and we will be able to return your call. So again, please reach out if you have any difficulty accessing the survey. So what is in the survey? What information are we trying to collect here? Uh, we have three kind of core sections of the survey. We have residential arrearages, commercial arrearages, and revenue loss. Um, for water systems who maybe don't have commercial uh, accounts, you will not see any of the commercial account numbers. Uh, for those who don't have any customers, so you don't have residential or commercial accounts, you're not going to see those questions in the survey. Um, we've done a lot of work to try to customize the survey to align with your water system so that you're not answering questions that aren't relevant to you. So just be aware that we're gonna probably cover some materials today or information that may not be applicable and you may not see those questions in your survey, um, but that's by design. So this is just an example of some things that you would probably see depending on the type of water system you are. But we have received a lot of information for folks, you know, do I need to complete this survey if I have 
no need. You know, our water system did not experience any COVID related financial loss. We don't plan on participating in this program. Um, yes, please fill out the survey if you do not intend to participate. This ensures that we're not holding any funding uh, on the side for you because we wanna make sure that that money is fully allocated to water systems that have reported a need where that money does have a purpose. So please uh, respond with a no to we have no financial loss. So how do you do that? It's literally two questions in the survey. It's super easy, it's in and out. Once you log in and you click uh, to start the survey for your water system, the first question, which is question zero, asks you to identify what type of system you are. For the vast majority of you, you are gonna be option number three, which is a water system that's not a wholesaler or a water system that's not part of a large legal entity umbrella, like a Cal Water. Um, so most of you will be option three. Once you select that, you get the first question in the survey, which you know, have you experienced any loss? Your answer will be no if you have not, and you will not see any other questions in the survey. You just submit your survey and you're out. You're done. You do not need to participate or do anything else. Um, so again, if you have had no COVID financial losses, you don't plan on participating in the survey, if you could just complete these two questions uh, and then submit, that would be super beneficial to all of the other water systems who do plan on participating in the survey and in this program. Okay, for everyone else who does plan on participating, I think it'd be helpful to go over um, some of the definitions for our eligible um, uses. So you'll see we reference quite a bit. It, this program is for residential and commercial arrearages. So what are residential customers? Residential customers include customers who receive water services to single family residences, multifamily residences, mobile homes, including but not limited to mobile homes and mobile home parks or farm worker housing. This aligns with the definition that we've used in our EAR report um, for quite a long time, but wanted to make sure that you guys uh, have access to it. The one that's a little bit new is commercial customers, which is a definition that we've had in the EAR in the past, but we typically combine it with institutional customers. So for the purposes of the arrearages program of uh, under commercial customers, we do include commercial and institutional. Um, I think it's a little bit easier to think about what is not included under the commercial umbrella. So it would be those non-residential customers that are industrial, agricultural irrigation or landscape irrigation. So if you have uh, customers in those categories with arrears, they would not be eligible for this program and should not be included in any of the data that you are providing in this survey. So commercial is typically um, office buildings, uh, stores, um, and it can include, um, so for institutional, it could be government, from uh, military facilities, hospitals, schools, churches. Um, again, hopefully this definition provides a lot of clarity and context, but if you have any specific questions about what would constitute a commercial customer, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are definitely happy to help. And you can use the Q&A box uh, here and we'll try to get to it during the Q&A portion of this webinar. Okay. So you've heard us talk a lot about the uh, COVID pandemic period, but how does that apply to your billing frequency? Uh, all of the data collected in this survey is related to this pandemic um, period of March 4th, 2020 through June 15th, 2021. But what's really great is the legislation allows for a little flexibility here. Um, you can include your billing frequency that captures these dates. So for those who bill monthly, for example, uh, you will not include your February billing period if someone is behind on their February bill. But if you have a March bill and it includes services that were provided on March 4th, 2020, then you can include 
uh, arrearages that are accrued 60 days after the deadline in March. We go all the way through June 2021. And this is where things get a little bit tricky due to the deadline of the survey. If you have customers that had accrued arrearages um, still on their account in May 2021, um, and then we hit June and it, it, the deadline for their June payment has passed, but, and they still have not paid their bill, they're late on their bill, all uh, arrearages that are accrued through their May deadline would be eligible um, for this program. The challenge is that the 60 day definition of arrearage falls after our survey deadline. So if you have a customer who did not already have accrued debt in June and they are late on their June bill, again, they have no arrearages, but they are late on their June bill. Um, you cannot include them in your responses in this survey because technically the 60 day window is after our survey deadline, depending on your deadline, your date. So for some of you, you know, look at the, the deadline for your um, June bill and see if it is before or after our September 10th window. Okay, now based on the data that we have, we know that the vast majority of water systems have monthly billing. However, we do have other water systems that have quarterly billing. Um, and it can really span a bunch of different um, timelines. So we're try just trying to give uh, an illustrative example here to hopefully help you determine um, what billing periods you can include in your data. So this is an example where the quarter starts at the beginning of the year. So the January, February, March quarter would be eligible for this program. So services provided in January, February that were included in that bill can be included. You don't have to do any special math. If someone missed their 2020 bill and they're still in arrears, because it includes that March 4th date and those dates after, that billing uh, period is eligible for this program. What would not be eligible is the last quarter in this example. So this last quarter, if it extended from May to July, 2021, um, for sure the deadline for that billing period uh, would be in that window where it wouldn't quite fall with that 60 days after the billing period to be included because that would be after our set survey deadline. So you would not be able to include this last quarter in your calculations. And then we do have a number of systems that bill annually. Uh, for those that do bill annually, uh, obviously you can't include any arrears for 2019 services. Um, you can include all of 2020. And uh, for 2021, you cannot include any arrears. The assumption is that you have not issued any bill for 2021. So you cannot have arrears when a bill has not gone out yet. We do know that there are systems that have billing frequencies that don't align with the examples that were given here, but hopefully this provides context um, so that you can figure out how your billing frequency uh, would align with the requirements for this program. If you have questions or you're not sure um, how to do this, please reach out to our email. We have um, a lot of people at the Water Board who are here, here to help you. So again, um, something that is important for this survey is that we autofill a number of questions in the survey from your 2020 EAR. And this is to make sure that your survey is tailored to your water system. So for example, if you told us that you do not charge your customers for water, then you will not see any of the residential or commercial arrearage questions because you do not bill your customers. Um, if you see that we are pulling data from your 2020 EAR that is inaccurate or has changed from when you reported your 2020 EAR, you can uh, request to reopen your 2020 EAR to change your answers. So contact your district engineer, your local primacy agency, or you email us 
at our community water systems COVID relief email address, and we will help you uh, make sure that your edits to the EAR are, are added. And then when you log back into your arrearage survey, you should see those new data points reflected there in your survey. We do encourage everyone to review the EAR data points that are in the survey so that you can make sure that they're all accurate before you start completing the survey because it really is triggering a lot of hide and reveal questions in the survey. Um, so we are encouraging everyone to just take a look at your EAR responses before you begin. Um, if you start clicking around too much in the arrears survey, you may uh, lose your EAR responses or um, pretty much break the survey, which then you would need to clear and restart it and start all over again, which is why we're encouraging people just to know what data they need to put in the survey before they begin. Okay, so we're gonna try to get into more specifics around uh, the residential and commercial arrearage questions and provide hopefully a lot more context and information around eligibilities and what can be included and how we're gonna be using this data. One of the important questions that we're asking um, water systems is, can your accounting system distinguish between non-payment for drinking water services from non-payment from other drinking water charges if it's on your bill? We do know that there's a lot of water systems out there, for example, that also include wastewater services on their bill. Maybe you have energy or uh, the internet or, or waste or garbage, um, other charges that are not drinking water charges. And if you cannot determine non-payment for drinking water services only, that's okay. You can still participate in this survey and in this program, but we do ask that you uh, help us out. We need you to calculate the average annual percentage that your drinking water charges usually are for your water bill. So for example, if you have a water bill that includes drinking water, wastewater, and energy, and for your residential accounts, if you look across the entire year, drinking water typically makes up, you know, 25% of an average residential bill. Then when you're reporting your total arrearages, which includes arrearages for all of these other non-drinking water charges, we will take the 25% number and we will, the state water board will multiply that against your arrearage number. So you don't have to do any math there in trying to estimate your drinking water arrearages. We will do that for you. We just need help estimating what your drinking water charges typically are so that we can do that math. We do provide a few examples in um, the help tips in the survey um, and in the question itself. But if you're struggling with this, again, we encourage you to reach out. Um, we're here to help you we wanna make sure that you can participate in this program. The information that we're collecting for residential and commercial arrearages is, is fairly basic. Um, we're asking for the total number of accounts, residential and commercial, that are in arrears for during the COVID pandemic period, the, the timeline that we just discussed earlier. Uh, we do ask for the total amount that's been accrued uh, for these accounts. So what is that debt? And we're also asking you to parse out the late fees. So do not include late fees in your total amount uh, of debt. It should be separated out. Uh, what is confusing, and we're seeing that some people are entering their data incorrectly into the survey, is the two questions that we have around uh, residential and commercial debt that's above $600. So we do have two questions in here that asks, you know, for a residential and commercial arrearages, the number of accounts that have more than $600 in debt, and then what that total dollar amount is if you add it all up. We are seeing that some um, water systems are breaking it out. They're, they're not including those accounts over $600 in their total amount that's been reported. And it needs to be inclusive. It should include those accounts over $600. So we're seeing them in the data that's coming in. We're going to reach out to those systems that have already reported this. Um, but we encourage you to, when you're looking at these questions, anything above $600 should also be included in the total amount that you're reporting for residential and commercial arrearages. 
the reason why we added these questions in here uh, is because there may be tax implications for certain water systems. Uh, if a water system was to forgive uh, more than $600 in debt relief, uh, there may, and it's not, um, it's not definite, but there may be a need to issue a 1099C or a tax form to customers that receive that debt relief above $600. Um, the Water Board does not provide tax advice to water systems, and so we cannot tell you whether or not this is going to be applicable to you or not. So we encourage you to contact, um, you know, tax professionals to get guidance on this. Uh, so we are asking this question so that we can figure out how many water systems um, may be impacted by, uh, by this tax issue. We have received questions asking whether or not we're going to be prioritizing water systems that have you know, more accounts um, with debt over $600. And the answer to that is no, we are not prioritizing these systems um, for either more funding or prioritized um, uh, you know, check issuance, if you will. It's really just to help us better understand the extent of this issue. So please make sure that you're reporting this accurately. In the revenue loss section, um, we are asking that you provide your 2019 total revenue and expenses for maintaining your water system. Uh, for your expense data, you should not include any planned or unplanned large capital expenses and really try to limit it to uh, what your, your O&M is. We are asking that you provide your loss accrued during the, that COVID pandemic um, timeline, looking at those billing cycles. Again, you know, we are trying to use this information to uh, make sure that we are providing the correct amount of assistance to water systems. And it also helps us during the, um, if we were to be audited on how we're distributing funds. So this information is really important. We did see that a number of water systems put $0 as their revenue and their 2020 EIR, which we pull into this survey. If your water system did not complete this data point in the 2020 EIR, you will not be able to submit this arrearage survey. So you need to go back into your EIR and fix this. If you truly had zero revenues, which could be from uh, non-drinking water bills. So you do not have to charge your customers to receive revenues to support your drinking water system. This could be from rent. It could be from, uh, you know, revenues that you receive from a county entity. It could be uh, revenues from leasing land or generating energy. Uh, if you are a state park or some other type of entity that has fees, um, those fees, all of that counts as revenue that your uh, water system brings in to support the operation of your water system. Um, so there has been some confusion over what we mean by revenue, and hopefully that helps. Um, you know, we a lot of folks have also asked us, you know, why are you including revenue loss here, um, even for uh, auditing purposes? But again, revenue. Revenue declines may be attributed to unpaid customer charges. Um, and so we wanna make sure that you're capturing that there, but we do recognize that you may have seen changes in your demand as well, which could have gone up or down. So we're not going to use the revenue loss to, um, to change or weight your arrearage numbers. So it's, it is for a different purpose. One of the things that we're allowing with this survey is aggregated reporting for those water systems that are underneath a single legal entity organization. So it's like that Cal Water or Golden State Water Company, those entities that have multiple PWS IDs underneath the same organization. Um, this is not allowed for water systems that are managed by uh, the same organization or company, but aren't underneath the same legal umbrella. So just because you're managed by the same organization doesn't mean you are under a legal entity. Um, most of you know if you're under one of these legal entities and you should coordinate um, with your management in order to see if there's going to be aggregated reporting or not. 
Um, we are allowing, uh, if you are doing aggregated reporting, you can group PWS IDs and submit multiple surveys. You just can't do double reporting. So you can't um, submit you know, two or three different surveys that, are, that includes data for the same PWS ID or water system. So if you have questions about that, please let us know. Um, when you do aggregated reporting, uh, it's going to clear out all of the EAR data that we're pre-filling and we're gonna ask you to complete those questions and calculate it yourselves. We will be checking that with data that um, we did collect in EAR to make sure that it's um, close to accurate. We do ask that when you are, um, if you're doing uh, aggregated reporting and you submit multiple surveys, to please use the same legal entity name uh, in each survey so that we can make sure we're grouping them together uh, effectively on our end. Um, again, we provide some examples here, but if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Again, this is just a reminder that there are gonna be a number of survey questions that you may not see in the survey um, due to the type of water system that you are, how you've responded to previous questions or what was in your 2020 EAR. So if you told us in your 2020 EAR that you do not have um, non-residential customers, you're not gonna see the commercial customer section of the survey. You'll only see residential and the revenue loss questions. Um, vice versa, maybe you only charge non-residential customers, you'll only see the commercial customer section and revenue loss. If you are a wholesaler and you do not have residential or commercial uh, connections, you can still complete the survey, you will see the revenue loss section. We do provide in the PowerPoint um, just a summary of where these questions are, the question numbers for the different sections. I'm not going to go over this, but it is in the PowerPoint for you to reference later. I do wanna encourage all of you to take a look at the help tips, uh, which is accessed by clicking on the little blue uh, circle with the question mark next to any of the survey questions. It will open up a new web page that has definitions and examples for every single one of the questions in the survey. You do not have to be logged in to the survey to access the help tips. If you go to this URL link here, that's on the slide, um, anyone can access it and you can see all the questions in the survey. So if you wanted to take a look at the questions before you get started, uh, you can go here. Um, you've heard me repeat it a million times, but I'm gonna keep doing it. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. We are here to help you. We have. Um, two uh, DDW units uh, full of staff who are monitoring our community water system COVID relief email. Um, and we also are looking at that uh, voicemail inbox. Please reach out if you have uh, questions. If you feel like you need more hands-on assistance um, answering the vast majority of the questions in the survey, or if you feel like you're gonna need help during the application phase, of this program, you can also request technical assistance from our technical assistance providers. We do have a, a request form. It's this PDF hyperlink here. Uh, you, it's already pre-filled for you. You just need to add your name and water system ID number and submit it to the email address provided here. And we will connect you right away to technical assistance providers. We have three organizations who are helping us with this um, and will help you. Our technical assistance providers are the California Rural Water Association, the Rural Community Assistant Corps, and the and Self-Help Enterprises. Um, they are helping folks with completing their 2020 EAR since we do require that data for the survey. Um, completing the survey itself, if you need help with developing and implementing a payment plan, they can help you with that, um, application assistance and, and complying with their required reporting that's gonna come after you accept funding from this program. I'm gonna just introduce uh, Michael Boyd with 
RCAC, where he's going to talk just a little bit more of the type of assistance that they can provide to systems with this program. Michael? Thank you, Kristen. Much appreciated, and thank you for that information. Yes, we are here uh, to assist those systems who may need uh, a lot of help with things like EAR and kind of determining arrearages. At this point in time, we are working with small systems or with systems throughout the state to really look at determining that revenue and or expense that maybe didn't get reported in the EAR. I think if I have a key takeaway for those who are attending today, uh, make sure that you have access to that EAR portal and make sure that that information is accurate and correct. We really view our assistance in three key timing phases. Uh, right now, many of the systems that we are interacting with uh, are, really need help in setting up a payment plan. For those who were not uh, underneath the SB 998 and having that need to have that, that shut off policy and payment plan in place, uh, we are finding that those systems need some, some help with uh, making sure that that policy is in place and that payment plan is there, as well as ensuring that that EAR is correct and accurate, and then moving on into submission and or uh, completion of that uh, rearage survey questionnaire. So. Uh, that is the first phase. Uh, second phase of our assistance right now is going to be moving into the application phase. There may, there may be many questions uh, as we go through application, which again, we don't have launched just yet, uh, but we are here to help those systems uh, to complete that as well. And finally, the programmatic reporting there at the end. We will need uh, to analyze and or the system will need to, to gather data uh, in order to report on uh, that debt and a rearage that has been forgiven. Uh, that method of reporting from my understanding is still uh, being developed at this time, uh, but know that we are here to assist you through that process. Uh, if you have any questions, as Kristen said, please reach out to uh, the COVID help uh, email address and or that phone number there, and we can get assigned to you as well uh, to help assist you through that process. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Michael. Glad you could join us today. Okay. Um, we do have some more information available on our website, which we posted um, not too long ago. So if you have not had a chance to visit our webpage, uh, we are providing the hyperlink here, waterboards.ca.gov backslash arrearage payment program. Uh, we do have uh, uh, different sections of that webpage, one for customers, one for drinking water systems, and one for wastewater systems. As you can imagine, we're keeping the drinking water system one as up to date as we possibly can, since that is our first priority for this program. We did create a FAQ uh, document, frequently asked question document, where what we're trying to do is keep that updated as much as we can. Uh, a lot of your questions that we're getting into our inbox today, uh, we're going to try to review those and see if we can expand the FAQ to make sure that we're addressing questions that uh, came in and especially ones that we're not able to get to on today's webinar. Um, there are other programs and resources available and I would really want you to check out the California Department of Community Services and Development website. Uh, they have uh, a new program that's being stood up, uh, LIWAP, which is using federal dollars uh, where uh, customers can apply for uh, funding. This program is being stood up now and you can't currently apply to it, but the timing of it will probably work out where it will be available to folks after our initial payments go out. So don't hold me to it, but that's something that we're, we're trying to coordinate with them on. Uh, there was a question that I saw in the inbox around, there is another program, and I'm sorry, it's not listed on the slide, um, that HSD, the housing uh, agency is, uh, has a program out there for renters and landlords for um, folks who are struggling to pay their rent during the COVID pandemic period. That program is also up and running uh, if, uh, and it does include utility bills. So you can apply for utility assistance through that program. Um, if that program does uh, support your arrearages and you have debt that's being written off from that, we ask that you not include that in your arrearage numbers to us. Um, we are trying to avoid uh, air quotes, double dipping across the different programs. So, but we recognize it's probably gonna be difficult to coordinate, but we are asking water systems to do their best here. If you have questions, uh, reach out and we'll try to connect you to the right folks. 
The last thing I want to just point out is troubleshooting. Um, we do recognize that with the survey, uh, it can be difficult. Um, we provided some definitions here of what these different buttons at the bottom of the screen do. If you're having issues seeing your EAR pre-fill questions, you can click on the pre-fill this section button. Uh, if you click save and validate, you'll it does save the survey. You're gonna see some validation errors potentially at the top of the screen if you haven't completed the survey, but you can ignore those and you can exit. Your responses will be saved until you come back into the survey to finish it. We have been telling people, if you are running into issues with the survey, it's not behaving the way that you, you would think it should behave. It's not displaying the information you feel like it should be displaying. If all else fails, um, it's kind of like shutting off your computer and turning it back on again. We encourage people to do the clear and reset button. That will clear all of your answers from the survey and you'll have to start all over again, but it should hopefully fix what any, any of the issues that you were encountering. So we do encourage folks as they're completing the survey to make sure you're writing down your answers um, outside of the survey so that you can um, reference those just in case you need to do a clear and reset. When you submit the survey, uh, it is saved to our database, um, but you can still go in and edit and change your responses before the September 10th deadline. So if things change between now and that deadline, or maybe um, you wanna change your answers, whatever reason you have, you can go back in and change things. So just wanna make sure it's really clear to folks that um, submitting does not mean you can't edit, but when we do hit that September 10th deadline, that is a hard close date at the end of the day uh, for that survey. And you won't be able to make changes to your survey responses after the close date. Okay, just a reminder, again, I said a hundred times, but September 10th is our deadline. Um, and it is a hard deadline, no extensions are available. Okay, finally, I think we've got um, a good amount of time for Q and A. Um, I am going to uh, start going through the questions in the Q and uh, Q and A box. And it looks like a lot of you have been upvoting those questions by clicking the little thumb, thumbs up. I'm going to read through those. And then I know that some folks have been submitting some questions through our inbox. So I will try to also uh, respond to those as well. So bear with me. We have a question in here about, um, you know, we have had uh, to close an account that was written off as bad debt during the COVID timeframe. Do we report that arrearage as well? Uh, and the answer is yes, arrearages for accounts that have been um, deactivated or no longer active, let's say that the customer has moved, uh, that is eligible under this program. So you can see in the survey questions that we asked for the total number of active and inactive accounts that have arrearages that accrued during the COVID pandemic timeframe. So Brian, I hope that answers your question. And I saw that 34 people upvoted that. If it's not what you were intending, um, please provide a clear question in the Q&A box. Okay, um, we have another one that says, does the water board know whether the governor is going to extend the water shutoff prohibition beyond the current September 30th date in order to allow more time for the arrearage program to, to be fully implemented. Um, another good question, something that I think folks have been talking about, but there has been no clear announcement made. So until there has been an official change to the shutoff moratorium, I think everyone should operate under the assumption that the September 30th deadline is firm. Um, and I would also encourage you again to make sure that you are getting your survey responses in by September 10th. Uh, even if the program was to extend further, that deadline is firm in terms of developing our allocation formula. So good question, Joe. Again, stay, stay tuned um, and hopefully an announcement will be made whether or not that uh, shutoff moratorium will be extended past September 30th. Um, we have a question in here that says, we suspended charging late fees and penalties during this time frame. Are they considered to be revenue shortfalls? Um, that's a really great 
question, Jim. Uh, I remember that in the survey, we asked you to provide uh, the sum of your late fees as a separate tally in our arrearage questions. Um, in terms of revenue shortfalls, I would say that I would um, not include those since that's typically um, something that, you know, if you were to, actually, I'm probably gonna go back and forth on that one. Let me look into that one before I give an official answer. So I think, and we'll put this in the Q&A. So Ch uh, Jim and all 26 people who thumbs up that question, we will, uh, ooh, even more people now, look at that. Um, we will definitely provide guidance on that. Um, give us a few days and we'll put it out um, on our website and email everybody on this. Okay, uh, let's move on. Our bills include water, sewer, trash services. Is it correct to say for now, this initial funding can only be applied to the water portion of the bill? Uh, Brian, yes. So if your bill includes all of these other services, uh, at the beginning of this presentation, um, I, I went over that we ask you to, if you cannot break out non-payment for drinking water only, we ask that you give us the percentage that drinking water services typically are on your average annual um, uh, bill for customers. We'll use that percentage to calculate what your arrearages may be. You're gonna report your total arrearages, which includes non-payment for all of these other services if you can't break them out. And then we'll, that's how we'll estimate your arrearage total. Um, then when you receive funding from the program, you will credit those accounts uh, with the funding provided. And, uh, and then hopefully we'll have definitely more guidance in our program guidelines on what that means for shutoffs and uh, payment plans. Okay, we've got, uh, do customers have to enter into a payment plan to be eligible for the reimbursement? If a customer makes uh, three payments while waiting for funding to appear in their account, is their account credited the full amount or only the amount that has not been paid at the time the funds are received. So the answer to that is really what you said at the bottom, only the amount that has not been paid at the time the funds are received. So a customer may have a certain amount of arrears uh, accrued um, and you report that in your survey. We use that for your allocation formula, but the, by the time you get the, the check from the water board and you are crediting accounts, you can only credit the amount that is still unpaid, which if it's lower than what it was when you reported to us, that is fine, but you cannot credit the account more than the debt that is still um, owed that had accrued during the COVID pandemic period. If you have funds that are unused um, after you receive them and you credit the accounts, then that funding would then need to be returned to the state. So hopefully, uh, Adrian, that answers your question. Okay, um, can you expand on the revenue shortfall provision on the survey? What records should water agencies maintain to support the estimates provided on revenue shortfall questions? How should agencies try to differentiate, oops, it just moved my cursor. Um, how should they differentiate uh, revenue variability to COVID versus general weather patterns, et cetera. Um, fantastic question, anonymous attendee. Uh, for the revenue shortfall questions, um, the type of uh, evidence or records that we would ask uh, is you know, your, uh, pretty much your tax return documents. We're not looking for anything more sophisticated than that possibly in the application phase. Again, we're still determining what the application requirements would be in terms of um, required materials that you submit to us. For uh, estimating revenue variability during the COVID pandemic period, um, you do not need to break out, you know, fluctuations in weather patterns or different demands due to people working from home, et cetera. It's really just what was the revenue, um, if you experienced revenue shortfalls during this time frame for whatever period, you know, how much were those revenue shortfalls? 
So hopefully that makes things a little bit easier for reporting purposes. Given the defined timeline of the relief period, would the past due bill period be any bills that were past due bills as of June 15th, 2021, or bills that were generated prior to June 15th, 2021, and they currently are 60 days more past due? So the relief period uh, refers to services, services that were provided during that time frame, so March 4th, 2020 to June 15th, 2021. So if you have a bill that comes out after that June 15th date that includes services that were pro provided on June 15th, that's the billing period you would be looking at. And then depending on the due date for the bill that included services provided on June 15th, 2021, if if there are 60 days past that due date and that 60 days ends before our September 10th survey deadline, then the, those accrued arrearages can be included in your estimates. However, if your bill that includes services provided on the 15th uh, has a due date where the 60 days after that due date occurs after our period, our um, survey deadline, then it should not be included. So Dominique, I hope that answers your question. If not, please reach out. We're happy to assist you with that. I know that can be a little confusing. Um, I have my agency does not shut off water due to non-payment. Unpaid water bills are transferred to a tax roll. How should these be handled? So this is a fantastic question, Forrest, and one that has come up um, a number of times from water systems over the last week or so. And that's one of the questions we're also trying to quickly answer. I'll just go to the next slide here. Um, these are some questions that we have received, and one of them aligns with yours. You know, accounts that have already been sent for collections, maybe to a, a county entity, um, are they eligible for this program? We're hoping to come out with more guidance on this question next week. Um, my best advice to water systems that have done this is to see if you can start collecting now information and data on how much, <clears throat> excuse me, how much is still due on these accounts. So if in 2020, for example, the accounts that were in debt were, were passed on to collections at the county, um, if those funds are still unpaid, um, so uh, they didn't pay their tax bill, um, you know, start seeing if you can collect that information because if it is eligible, and hopefully again, we'll have more guidance on that next week, um, then you would want to include that in your survey responses. So I know this impacts a lot of water systems and we're hoping to have guidance out soon on this. So thank you, close out that one. Um, what happens if we receive money? Oh, I've discussed this one already. Again, if, if you are receiving money from another program um, to that covers utility arrearages and you have credited that account or will be accrediting that account um, you know, within the next few months, then I would not include that um, arrearage for that particular account in your survey responses. Um, what if our customers have been offered a payment plan already in the past six months? Do we have to offer it to them again as part of this program? Um, Joe, I think that's a really fantastic question. I think the expectation is that you do need to offer it again to the customer after you have credited their account um, with whatever funds you receive from this program. And then they'll have 30 days to um, accept that offer. So even if you've offered it to them you know, six months ago and they didn't sign up and they're still in arrears, I think the expectation is that you need to offer it to them one more time before you can uh, move forward with shut off if, uh, if it's after the shut off moratorium. Um, we've got another question around the transfer of the county tax rolls. Again, um, we're hoping to come out with more guidance on this hopefully next week. So please um, visit our website and we'll try to send out an email 
announcement about that as well. So good questions. Um, and we know that impacts a lot of water systems. If we don't receive 100% of our arrearages, what is the priority for dispersing funds? Uh, a great question, Rochelle. Uh, that is something that will be outlined in the program guidelines. Um, so stay tuned. A draft of that hopefully will be available next week. Uh, can more than one person from a water system be enrolled as an EAR user? Yes. Uh, thank you, Nicole. That's a great question. Um, we can have multiple water system reporters in the EAR for a single uh, water system. So definitely, if you would like someone from your water system to register as a new EAR user, even though you already have someone registered, that's okay. Um, please feel free to do that. Um, and you will get approved. And then make sure you follow the instructions that we provided on how you add a water system, which then has to be approved again. Um, but soon you'll be able to then respond to the survey. All right, um, let's see. What happens if funds are applied uh, to a customer's account, but the customer does not sign up for the payment plan? Uh, again, it depends on what deadline comes first. If the shutoff moratorium deadline has already passed and the customer was then given the 30 day window to sign up for a payment plan and they choose not to sign up, then uh, you can uh, shut off that account. But again, that's something um, you want to you want to make sure you're playing paying close attention to the shutoff moratorium deadline. But at that time, um, you can shut them off. And then more guidance will definitely be provided in the um, program guidelines. So stay tuned, but hopefully that answers your question. Um, our account system can query arrearages, but does not accept a dated range or distinguish between account types. Is a query of arrearages at that point in time. Uh, the cost and time to reprogram our accounting system is not feasible. Uh, thanks for your comment, Forrest. I think in that case, definitely reach out to us and or our technical assistance providers so we can see how we can help you uh, determine your arrearages uh, using the accounting system that you have. So if any of you are struggling to figure out what your arrearages may be um, because you have a particular accounting system that's difficult uh, to operate, then please reach out and let's see if we can help you um, estimate your arrearages. Are late fees included in the arrearage amount? The answer is no. In the survey, we ask that you break those out and do not include late fees in your total arrearage amount for either residential or commercial customers. Uh, what is considered to be a revenue shortfall? So again, a revenue shortfall is, you know, did you experience revenue loss compared to your previous year's revenue uh, during this COVID pandemic? So, you know, if you saw your revenues decline from what you typically see as your annual revenue, please try to estimate what those shortfalls may be. This could be anything from uh, arrearages, to declined demand. Um, it does not include unplanned expenses. We're not collecting income data here. It's purely revenue. So revenue shortfalls, um, money that you receive from uh, billing customers or from other revenue generating activities. So I hope that helps answer your question, Jim. Um, let's see, for customers enrolled in a payment plan, you said they may not be shut off. What if they default on their payment plan terms? Uh, yes, so if a customer is enrolled in a payment plan and then they default, um, there, there will be, they will be able to be shut off at that point. And you can, see, we have some guidance on that already in our, our FAQ document that's posted on our website. And so hopefully that's helpful. All 
All right, are past due balances on accounts that were accrued prior to March 4th, 2020 eligible? They are still outstanding and have perhaps been unable to make their, um, their payments because of COVID. So Jennifer, it depends on what your billing frequency looks like. So if you have a billing frequency that uh, includes the March 4th uh, service period, um, as well as services provided um, before March 4th, but it's all on one bill, then um, any debt accrued from that would be eligible. But if you're referring to past due balances from a billing period before the one that includes that Mar March 4th date, then the answer is no. So if they had accrued arrearages, let's say that began accruing in 2000, early 2019, um, none of that debt would be eligible. It's only for debt that that had that was added to that account, um, starting with that March fourth time period, with that um, your billing uh, period that has that date, all the way through the June fifteenth date. So hopefully that helps. That that does require I recognize a little bit of finagling on your end to try to parse out arrearages that only accrued uh, during that time period. Again, if you have further questions about that, please let us know. Okay. Um, are districts still required to collect from the customer for, for the balance or is it considered forgiven? Does the funding received have to be paid back? So no, so once you receive um, funding from the state water board uh, for this program and you credit your customer's account, uh, with the funding, that money uh, does not need to be paid back either by the customer or by the water system back to the water board. It's almost treated like a grant. It's a one-time payment. Um, the only time you would have to return money to the state water board is if you received a check from us and you could not credit it to all of your accounts. You had money that was left over uh, unspent that would then be returned to the state. But this is not like a loan or anything um, that you or the customer would need to repay. All right, um, I think we had some questions come in from the inbox. So let me just jump over the, to those real quick. Um, you know, does funding apply to closed accounts? Again, yes, um, inactive accounts that did accrue debt during this COVID pandemic period, the March 4th through the June 15th, 2021 period, um, if they accrued any debt during that time period, but that they are now inactive, um, that they are still eligible for this program and you can include them in the reporting in the survey. Um, Again, uh, definitions around what past due means, you know, in arrearage, it's defined as a customer utility bills that are 60 days or more past due. Um, definitely includes active and inactive accounts, as well as customers that are already on payment plans or have payment arrangements already in place with the water system. So if you already have a customer who's on a payment plan, um, but they still have debt that accrued during this time period, they're still eligible under this program. Um, yep, more questions around closed accounts. So hopefully that's covered now. Um, let's say we delayed our annual water rate increase for six months due to COVID. Can that impact be included in the revenue loss amount? Uh, great question. And I would say no at this time, I would not include that in your revenue loss amount, uh, but a good question. Let's see, please go over the 60 day past due for both March 4th through June 15th. Uh, as I'm understanding, if the due date is 21 days after the uh, bill date, then we are only capturing 60 days past the due date for delinquencies. Yes, that's correct. We would only include bill dates prior to March 26th, which will be due on March. Yeah, I think uh, anonymous, oh, this was, an anonymous person. We can definitely um, touch base again on this. So again, take a look at your bill due date, right? So if your 
bill due date, which included services that were provided on June 15th, you want to look 60 days past that bill due date. If that do, if the 60 day uh, window ends after our survey deadline, September 10th, then it is not eligible. If it ends before September 10th, uh, it would be eligible. So hopefully that helps. If that did not answer your question, um, please reach out to us. Okay. Um, we have a, a ton of questions in here and I'm looking at the clock. I know that we're not gonna be able to get through all of them. So for folks um, who are still with us on Zoom, um, please feel free to go and upvote questions that you see in Q&A so I can um, try to respond to the ones that folks are most interested in. If your question is not covered, again, we will review everything and put out documentation, hopefully early next week, that answers questions um, that were included in this webinar. So thank you again for your patience. We appreciate um, your participation here today. Um, is there a specific reason why apartment complexes are not eligible for relief, considering people were allowed to skip paying rent without being evicted? Um, so Greg, you might have misinterpreted something that was said before, and I apologize, but apartment complexes are eligible um, for relief. So uh, make sure that you uh, read the language um, in the survey, but uh, multifamily uh, apartment complexes uh, count as a residential customer and they would be eligible. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Okay, um, let's see, they're moving around. Uh, if we didn't charge the customers late fees because we were not supposed to, but we can document what they should have been, can we still ask for those funds um, without charging late fees and then crediting it back to the account? So Christy, there's gonna be um, guidance in our program guidance on how we are going to treat late fees underneath this program, so stay tuned. But for the purposes of the survey, um, we encourage you to document your late fee numbers in a question, but don't include late fees in your total amount. Um, now, if you want, um, we ask that you only include late fees that you truly are displaying to the customer. Um, so if you have suspended late fees and they haven't been on their past due bills, I would not include them here in your uh, residential or commercial average numbers in the survey. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, will the RC, RCAC webinars have new or different info from today's webinar? Uh, that's a, a great question, Stacy. I believe it will have new content. So a lot of what we've covered today should be included in the webinar, um, but we'll try to include more information, especially tackling some of the questions that have come in um, around eligibilities that we're still trying to um, answer for you. And all of your questions today are really gonna help shape that webinar, um, try to address more of these uh, in it. So it will be very similar, but different, and hopefully um, will be beneficial to everyone who wanna participate. Are the eligible arrearages only those greater than 600 per customer? No. So um, the $600 uh, questions are really just informative for the state water board and our legislature. Uh, we are not going to be, um, you know, anybody who has more than $600 is definitely eligible um, and anyone below $600 is eligible. So there are absolutely no eligibility um, criteria or decisions being made off of the accounts that either are above or below $600. Um, so that is not uh, the intent of those questions in the survey. So Amy, hopefully that helps clear up some confusion. So again, um, if, if someone has just $5 in arrearages, um, you count their account and you add the $5 to the total outstanding amount and they are eligible underneath this program. Will the disconnection fees we were not allowed to charge be considered revenue loss if our board decided to also waive penalty charges with those count if not due to a state mandate? So really good questions, Sylvia. I think at this time, you know, that <clears throat> 
I would only include, you know, anticipated revenue loss that kind of accounts more with your regular, um, what you regularly were uh, taking in as revenue. So in 2019, for example, if you typically bring in a certain percentage or a dollar amount around, um, you know, late fees or penalty charges, and then you didn't collect any of that in 2021, I would include that in your revenue loss. But because we had such a, um, uh, we had a lot of folks who were unable to pay their bills during the COVID pandemic period, those disconnection fees or late fees would have been significantly greater if you hadn't uh, suspended them. And the difference there would, I would not include that. So it's really just looking at what you typically bring in, um, you know, were you not able to bring that in um, during the pandemic period. So hopefully that helps you. All right, we've got a few more questions that have come in from our email. Um, the city bills for wastewater conveyance and those arrearages are reportable. Um, so uh, this question from Brian, wastewater arrearages are not reportable in this survey. This survey is only collecting data for drinking water services. So please do not include any wastewater arrearages unless the only caveat is unless you cannot disassociate it, it disassociate arrearages for all of these other services on your bill. So if you can't do it, then do include it, but we will use um, the percentage that you provide to estimate what your drinking water arrearages may be. Um, Yeah, and it would be pretty much any, so your water bill, the charges that you charge customers, if it includes um, uh, different types of fees on the bill, it includes like a base rate or a fixed fee, um, and those are all unpaid, those all count as arrearages. Um, it's not just like variable rates or fees or um, something that's based on purely consumption. So it does include more than, um, it does include more than that. So it's whatever the bill has. So I'm reading, Brian kind of sent a long question and you know they've got different fees on their bills in, in addition to kind of the, the regular service fee. Yeah, and Brian, yours is very specific. So we'll definitely follow up with you. Um, If, you, if you're having any trouble within your water system, within your organization, trying to figure out how to collect this information to report, um, please reach out to us. We'll try to see if we have any other contacts within your organization to help you find the right person to connect with within your water system. So that, I know that our emails have gone to um, administrative contacts and others who maybe don't have access to this financial information. So trying to find who to contact can be difficult. So we're definitely here to help you if we can. Um, we're at the final two minutes. Uh, will there be a customer eligibility criteria that must meet to receive this assistance? Um, the customer has to be either a residential customer or a commercial customer that falls underneath those definitions that we covered earlier in the presentation. You can also find those definitions in the survey itself um, and definitely in the help tips section of the survey. So if you have any question about customer eligibility, please let us know. Um, there is nothing beyond uh, those categories for eligibility for customers. So for example, there is no criteria around income, um, you know, where someone lives, or, uh, or any, other, any other sort of economic or demographic status. It literally is just their customer type, if they're residential or commercial. Uh, in question 25, it states that community water systems must have experienced financial impacts from accrued residential commercial drinking water arrearages. Can you define financial impacts as revenue loss for arrearages on the books? Yes, that's correct for Daniel. Um, someone has asked, are pass-through charges like city utility taxes also reportable? Um, they are reportable in, in that for your 2019 revenue or for your, um, uh, they would be included in your 2019 revenue if you get pass-through. 
uh, fun funds from your city uh, utility taxes. Also, if you received less um, utility taxes than you normally do during the COVID pandemic period, you can report that as a loss for revenue loss during this time period. So thank you, uh, Arturo. Um, will you be pushing out more information on whether or not we will uh, be required to issue a 1099-C? Uh, unfortunately, no, the State Water Board um, cannot provide tax advice. And so for uh, questions related to issuances of 1099-C, if you provide more um, uh, debt relief to systems with more than, or customers with more than $600 in debt, we do encourage you to reach out to your, your tax advisors to get guidance on that, Monique. Uh, will there be criteria for how to administer credits or do we not receive the full amount of funds needed to cover the total arrearage amount? So Christina, um, if we, um, let's say that there is more need out there than funding available and you receive um, some money, but not enough to call, cover all arrearages, I think there's gonna be some guidance in the program guidance materials on how to administer credits. Um, so stay tuned, hopefully a draft of that will be provided uh, sometime next week. And I just wanna point out the time, we are at 11.31 and there are still quite a few questions in our Q&A box. Um, I see 172 and I know more coming in through our email. So we will uh, hunker down, review all of these questions and try to put out some additional guidance uh, sometime next week on our website. So please stay tuned. Again, if you have more questions, uh, please email us at our community water system um, inbox. Try to display that here, where is it? Here it is. Um, please reach out. Again, we're gonna be sharing these slides with everyone who joined us today posting them on our website. The recording from today will be posted on our website. Um, and we really hope that you all can participate. Thank you again for joining us.